and uh, next talk is how to read mr fistulogram or deficogram it is presented by dr samarth jankar thank you for inviting me and i am dr samrat jankar uh, i am talking on how to read mr fistulogram uh, i bring greeting from symbiosis university hospital and research center point is uh, so i disclosure i am not the radiologist i am a colorectal surgeon i am just giving what i have been doing and what is going to help reading the mr fistulogram more better it is an just collaborative thought process so best modality for evaluation of fistula is nothing but the per rectal examination there is no other alternative for that and this is the best mri to do uh, mri we know that mri is best to provide superior visualization of splinter anatomy and accurate mapping of fistula tract and occult disease we can reveal very nicely we all know this but when we see this kind of report we are literally frustrated we don't want to do anything again surgeon mind will come i will go and i will operate what i feel better rather than going for the mri so being a surgeon what is expected from the radiologist is i want to know where is the internal opening and internal splinter that is a central disease i want to know what is the relation of the fistula with the splinter the particularly external splinter so my decision about splinter cutting splinter preserving surgery will be decided i want to know pathology in different anogenital space what need to be drained and what need to be left and also external opening blind ending and if there is a second internal opening if this is like that then why surgeon doesn't routinely prescribe the mri the basic is radiologist will give saint mark classification saint gem classification surgeon think parks and nothing will work on the table we will do whatever best in our hand that's what the routine the weakest link in mr fistulogram the universal language of radiologist and surgeon doesn't meet and we don't know what a radiologist should give and radiologist don't know what surgeon the finding changes his plan of treatment which is available in everything not in fistula that is a major crux so for this dr rajna sukal has developed the fistula mapping concept that is nothing but it is an concept template where we can record the anogenital sepsis anogenital sepsis nothing but fistula and abscess together we can call as anogenital sepsis so it is a simple performer we need in five points internal opening so my thought process will come where to hit the internal opening interspintric space sometime there is abscess cavity or tract where to ligate if it is a lip i need to hook the tract taking 1 cm side level is a interspintric lower high interspintric low transpintric or high transpintric sometime hydrogenic translevator there are seven spaces in the perianal area those spaces are perianal perineum deep postanal ischial infralevator supralevator spaces we want to know end that is external opening where it is is the blind ending or is there any second internal opening and distant we can see on the coronal line sagittal from the internal opening to external opening let's see how map will work if suppose internal opening clockwise they have given 1 to 12 we can appreciate where it is we can see interspintric space abscess fistula we can think about what we can do either drain or we have to do fistulotomy where is it if it is high transpintric then my thought process will come splinter preserving if not then everything will be splinter cutting the anogenital spaces what space is involved if i am not draining the infralevator space possibility patient will not going to recover so if they tell clearly which space it will be more useful for me to decide and where is the end this is simple map if we ask radiologist sometime this will help us to think what he is giving so if we see this is so nice but what happens is when mri comes we are hum humbled because it's not like ct it has steven weighted image these are very good for anatomy and fat fat appear bright white water appear dark and here is the t1 contrast they give in a fat suppressed t1 contrast which is making inflammation more prominent and t2 these are best for the fluid and edema and inflammation water as a bright and fat as a bright but stir image they do that is fat suppress to make the uh, pathology the edema inflammation prominent by suppressing the fat if we see this is a t1 image a t2 image we can see that this is a prominent but by making a t1 stir this fat has become suppressed and this become prominent this is the beauty of t2 fat suppress image 
So to see the analogy, this is the image we can see side also. When we suppress it, everything will become suppressed and pathology will be more prominent. We can appreciate that is the beauty of T2 fat suppression. And diffusion weighted images, diffusion weighted images are nothing but going one step ahead where we can see that normal tissue appear more dark or greeny. We will feel that there is nothing, only tissue is or fat inflammation is coming up. So if we see T1, here we can see that collection is dark, T2 collection is bright and fat suppressed collection is going to be a more brighter and rest is suppressed and diffusion weighted is where the tissue is appear greeny and more darker and your only pathology will becoming prominent. This is what the beauty of MRI. If we see, we will see, appreciate. I am not taking next image of prior shown because which will not allowed in this conference to show. So we are going what radiologists do, he take all the four at one uh, console to see us appreciate anatomy and also pathology together so he can give. He knows everything but only problem is surgeon, we don't know what to ask radiologist to give an MR fistula. So going ahead, these are simple protocol, we need 1.5 to 3 Tesla, 3 planes, 3 mm sections, axial coronal sagittal in T1, T2 and also they take a T1 contrast image and T1, T2 stir and diffusion weighted images and axial and coronal T1 contrast images. So many of the things are there, we need to focus where we want what. But being a surgeon, when radio, MRI report comes and film comes, if there is a CD, just hook on and try to appreciate which uh, is this level and what is the anatomy. If nothing is there, axial fat suppress T2 image along with coronal image, 90-95% of the thing will be solved by seeing that much and we can appreciate because our finger MRI already done and see the image, you will get the more information rather than seeing the report. So, anal clock they follow which we see in the lithotomy and this is the anatomy, we can appreciate that, this we see but here is a thin spinter, this is a blue one is an internal spinter and this is a levator and this is a red one is an external spinter. So thin white whatever going on, this is the interspintric space. So appreciating the anatomy will be more important. If we see anatomy in axial, if we go at the levator, only we see levator half U circle and at the middle tube in tube, this is outer tube is external spinter, this one is a whitish is interspintric area, inner one is an internal spinter. And down again internal spinter is not there. We see inverted U as an external spinter not complete circle. So if we see the anatomy that is a spinter, then we need to see the uh, surrounding spaces. The spaces are actually divided into three. Uh, there is a, some transverse uh, fascia septum and ischial fossa fascia which will divide lower one is an perianal, second one is an uh, ischial space, above one is an infralivator. And above the levator, this is a levator in coronal, above the levator is a supralevator uh, uh, space. These are the simple four lateral spaces. If you see internal spinter, external spinter and spaces, most of the pathology we can find out and that will help us to plan even in the abscess in the uh, uh, on table. Something the pattern has been developed by Dr. Rajun Asukali which will help us mentally to prepare what kind of procedure we are going to do. This is pattern is based on the basic thought process is whenever there is a fistula, the uh, pathology start here and crosses the internal spinter. Something medial to it is never going to come as a fistula because it will rupture heal by itself as a submucosal. When it crosses the internal spinter, we know that internal spinter property in fissure, small 1 mm cut also spinter goes in spasm. We don't treat the fissure, we cut the spinter because we want to relieve the pressure. That's what happens when the pathology goes here, the internal spinter goes in spasm. Because of that, now there is a left space, it has to go a path of least resistance. It can go down, which will become a low interspintry, go up high interspintry, it can go down between the subcutaneous part or below the superficial part become a low transpintric or it can go between the deeper and superficial part become a high transpintric. Only four path it will travel if we are genuinely interested to learn that pattern we can find out and we can decide what treatment we can go for the patient. So based on the pattern it travel, it can be a low interspintric fistula, it can be a low transpintric fistula, it can be an anterior eye because anteriorly that is a deep perineum space posteriorly deep postural space and it can be a high interspintric. Four pattern it travel, it will become a five patterns to decide and we can decide the treatment modality. 
लो इंटरेस्ट पिंट्रिक लेट इट बी एप्सिस और फिस्टोल इट डजेंट मैटर बिकॉज इट इज एनोजेनेटल सेप्सिस सिंपल ट्रीटमेंट इज डिवाइड एवरीथिंग ऑन एम आर आई वी कैन अप्रिशिएट दैट इंटरनल स्पिंटर एक्सटर्नल स्पिंटर इंटरेस्ट पिंट्रिक फिशुला देर इज इंटरेस्ट पिंट्रिक फिशुला सो ट्रीटमेंट इज जस्ट कट एवरीथिंग एंड अलाउ इट टू हील एंड डेफिनेटली इट विल हील इद इन अ थ्री टू फोर वीक इट इज अ स्पिंटर कटिंग सर्जरी सो गोइंग टू लो ट्रांसपिंट्रिक फिशुला लेट इट बी एप्सेस सॉरी लेट इट बी एप्सेस और लेट इट बी फिशुला the low transpentric is i am not at all concern because here is the part of deep spinter deep external spinter is risk of incontinence rest divide everything that is spinter cutting is going to give a best outcome so in this patient we can see that sorry in this patient we can see that this is a female patient having the pathology on a right side and going at a 12 o'clock and opening into the uh, internal opening and it is a kind of the anterior low transpentric uh, fistula pattern with abscess so this patient we can cut the splinter but remember anteriorly if it is a female or recurrent fistula ibd associated post radiation we need a splinter preserving procedure rest everything we can uh, go for low transpentric into splinter cutting so going to anterior high transpentric anteriorly there is a deep perineum space so in this patient we need splinter preserving procedure we don't want incontinence if it is a female patient we can see that the anteriorly track is going uh, this is a 12 o'clock here is a internal opening it goes up and having the sinus kind of thing sinus abscess fistula everything is same we can call as a anogenital sepsis so this patient deserve for splinter preserving procedure posterior high transpentric this is a deep postnatal space posterior track goes to deep postnatal and then from a either a unilateral bilateral a horseshoe fistula in this cases we need splinter preserving procedure because risk of incontinence is high and last one is when travels up it become a high interspintric supra levator even abdominal this patients are simple to treat because you just need to tackle the glandular area and divide everything internal splinter till the anorectal junction patient will get a better outcome so this is going up it is not crossing we have to ask is the pathology hyper intensity medial to external splinter lateral medial to external splinter almost 40% of the pathology you just drain inside everything will be solved when it goes lateral is it high or low if low it is a simple splinter cutting if it goes high then only the question what to preserve what to not preserve so yeah we see this is a pattern concept what uh, the radiologist gives this is something internal opening what he tell io internal opening at 6 o'clock interspintric there is a track and going into a deep postnatal space going right uh, infra levator right ischial and right perianal and opening into the external opening at a 3 o'clock position 7 o'clock position so simply if we give in this format we can map out in our mind rather than reading complete report this can be applicable and we can improvise more and more so to Excellent. conclude Excuse MRI me, is cost Excuse effective me. than recurrence please summarize yeah, it finish okay uh, mri is cost effective than recurrence mri is cheaper than the cost of laser mri has a endorsed by the international guideline and mri has been medico legally safety if at all we have recurrence or incontinence and also it improve the surgical planning giving the gps for the surgeon so we should prescribe mri wherever it is feasible and we should read by ourselves thank you Thank you, Dr. Samrat. It is a nice and concise talk which covers all the basics for uh, MR fistulogram.